Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world, indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Keep close to nature's heart. And break clear away, once in a while, and climb a mountain or spend a week in the woods. Wash your spirit clean. The earth does not belong to us, we belong to the earth. We're running the most dangerous experiment in history right now, which is to see how much carbon dioxide the atmosphere can handle before there is an environmental catastrophe. We could have saved the earth but we were too damned cheap. If you can't be in awe of mother nature, there's something wrong with you. Sooner or later, we will have to recognize that the earth has rights, too, to live without pollution. What mankind must know is that human beings cannot live without Mother Earth, but the planet can live without humans. The environment is everything that isn't me. We have enslaved the rest of the animal creation, and have treated our distant cousins in fur and feathers so badly that beyond doubt, if they were able to formulate a religion, they would depict the devil in human form. Thank God men cannot fly, and lay waste the sky as well as the earth. Plans to protect air and water, wilderness and wildlife are in fact plans to protect man. Water and air, the two essential fluids on which all life depends, have become global garbage cans. The only way forward, if we are going to improve the quality of the environment, is to get everybody involved. The most important thing about global warming is this. Whether humans are responsible for the bulk of climate change is going to be left to the scientists, but it's all of our responsibility to leave this planet in better shape for the future generations than we found it. Conservation is a state of harmony between men and land. The time is right for electric cars, in fact the time is critical. The future will either be green or not at all. It is horrifying that we have to fight our own government to save the environment. If all mankind were to disappear, the world would regenerate back to the rich state of equilibrium that existed 10,000 years ago. If insects were to vanish, the environment would collapse into chaos. We learned that economic growth and environmental protection can and should go hand in hand. Climate change is a terrible problem, and it absolutely needs to be solved. It deserves to be a huge priority. We don't have to sacrifice a strong economy for a healthy environment. Raising awareness on the most pressing environmental issues of our time is more important than ever. People need to be cautious because anything built by man can be destroyed by Mother Nature. I can find God in nature, in animals, in birds and the environment. I think the cost of energy will come down when we make this transition to renewable energy. Try to leave the earth a better place than when you arrived. Energy conservation is the foundation of energy independence. Nature is the mother and the habitat of man, even if sometimes a stepmother and an unfriendly home. A true conservationist is a man who knows that the world is not given by his fathers, but borrowed from his children. In a few decades, the relationship between the environment, Resources and conflict may seem almost as obvious as the connection we see today between human rights, democracy and peace. Climate change is happening, humans are causing it, and I think this is perhaps the most serious environmental issue facing us. Moral codes adjust themselves to environmental conditions. Every drop in the ocean counts. Mother Nature is not sweet. They claim this mother of ours, the Earth for their own use, and fence their neighbors away from her, and deface her with their buildings and their refuse. All is connected. No one thing can change by itself. We may achieve climate, but weather is thrust upon us. We are aware only of the empty space in the forest, which only yesterday was filled with trees. By polluting clear water with slime you will never find good drinking water. Sadly, it's much easier to create a desert than a forest. Environmental policy must strike a balance between the Earth's best interests and our citizens' pressing needs. Unless we keep this planet healthy, everything else is for naught. People blame their environment. There is only one person to blame, and only one, themselves. You will die but the carbon will not, its career does not end with you. 
it will return to the soil, and there a plant may take it up again in time, sending it once more on a cycle of plant and animal life. Nuclear power will help provide the electricity that our growing economy needs without increasing emissions. This is truly an environmentally responsible source of energy. Saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth. These are one and the same fight. We must connect the dots between climate change, water scarcity, energy shortages, global health, food security and women's empowerment. Solutions to one problem must be solutions for all. If you cut down a forest, it doesn't matter how many sawmills you have if there are no more trees. Environmental pollution is an incurable disease. It can only be prevented. Every creature is better alive than dead, men and moose and pine trees, and he who understands it aright will rather preserve its life than destroy it. I think the environment should be put in the category of our national security. Defense of our resources is just as important as defense abroad. Otherwise what is there to defend? I'm anti-tax, but I'm pro-carbon tax. I see humanity now as one vast plant, needing for its highest fulfillment only love, the natural blessings of the great outdoors, and intelligent crossing and selection. Birds are indicators of the environment. If they are in trouble, we know we'll soon be in trouble. After all, Sustainability means running the global environment, Earth Incorporated, like a corporation, with depreciation, amortization and maintenance accounts. In other words, keeping the asset whole, rather than undermining your natural capital. We live in a world bathed in 5,000 times more energy than we consume as a species in the year, in the form of solar energy. It's just not in usable form yet. Natural gas is a better transportation fuel than gasoline, so if that's the case, it's cheaper, it's cleaner and it's a domestic resource. When we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. I'm very concerned for the future of the Earth and its amazing creatures. We've got to be careful and make sure we don't foul our own nest. Mankind has probably done more damage to the earth in the 20th century than in all of previous human history. If people destroy something replaceable made by mankind, they are called vandals, if they destroy something irreplaceable made by God, they are called developers. Destroying rainforest for economic gain is like burning a renaissance painting to cook a meal. No one is an environmentalist by birth. It is only your path, your life, your travels that awaken you. Just as modern mass production requires the standardization of commodities, so the social process requires standardization of man, and this standardization is called equality. As you heat the planet up, it's just like boiling a pot. If we don't continue to pursue alternative, emissions-free energy sources like nuclear fuel, we are at risk of increasing our dependence on costly natural gas. Local innovation and initiative can help us better understand how to protect our environment. I do believe very strongly that all of us and all of the other things in the context of our planet with Mother Nature, all of these things absolutely have a profound effect. We won't have a society if we destroy the environment. Environmental concern is now firmly embedded in public life, in education, medicine and law, in journalism, literature and art. Our world faces a true planetary emergency. I know the phrase sounds shrill, and I know it's a challenge to the moral imagination. Every time I have some moment on a seashore, or in the mountains, or sometimes in a quiet forest, I think this is why the environment has to be preserved. We are using resources as if we had two planets, not one. There can be no plan B because there is no planet B. If a man walks in the woods for love of them half of each day, he is in danger of being regarded as a loafer. But if he spends his days as a speculator, shearing off those woods and making the earth bald before her time, he is deemed an industrious and enterprising citizen. We assume that everything's becoming more efficient, and in an immediate sense that's true, our lives are better in many ways. But that improvement has been gained through a massively inefficient use of natural resources, why are ecologists and environmentalists so feared and hated? 
This is because in part what they have to say is new to the general public, and the new is always alarming. The quicker we humans learn that saving open space and wildlife is critical to our welfare and quality of life, maybe we'll start thinking of doing something about it. Green tech could be the largest economic opportunity of the 21st century. It's coming home to roost over the next 50 years or so. It's not just climate change, it's sheer space, places to grow food for this enormous horde. Either we limit our population growth or the natural world will do it for us, and the natural world is doing it for us right now. The sooner we get started with alternative energy sources and recognize that fossil fuels makes us less secure as a nation, and more dangerous as a planet, the better off we'll be. Harmony with land is like harmony with a friend, you cannot cherish his right hand and chop off his left. You cannot achieve environmental security and human development without addressing the basic issues of health and nutrition. We have no reason to think that climate change is harmful if you look at the world as a whole. Most places, in fact, are better off being warmer than being colder. And historically, the really bad times for the environment and for people have been the cold periods rather than the warm periods. Liberals in Congress have spent the past three decades pandering to environmental extremists. The policies they have put in place are in large part responsible for the energy crunch we are seeing today. We have not built a refinery in this country for 30 years. Take a course in good water and air, and in the eternal youth of nature you may renew your own. Go quietly, alone, no harm will befall you. Not all is doom and gloom. We are beginning to understand the natural world and are gaining a reverence for life, all life. You don't have to live in the country and grow your own food to be green. In Kenya women are the first victims of environmental degradation, because they are the ones who walk for hours looking for water, who fetch firewood, who provide food for their families. The reality is gas prices should be much more expensive than they are because we're not incorporating the true damage to the environment and the hidden costs of mining oil and transporting it to the US whenever you have an unpriced externality. You have a bit of a market failure, to the degree that eternality remains unpriced. The real cure for our environmental problems is to understand that our job is to salvage Mother Nature. We are facing a formidable enemy in this field. It is the hunters. And to convince them to leave their guns on the wall is going to be very difficult. We must return to nature and nature's God. There is no place where we can safely store worn-out reactors or their garbage no place. The hydrogen-powered car, with its high fuel mileage and zero emission rate, is just one example of the products under development that will help increase our energy independence. For me, going vegan was an ethical and environmental decision. I'm doing the right thing by the animals. The cheapest natural gas in the world is in the United States. A knowledgeable and courageous U.S. president could help enormously in leading the world's nations toward saving the climate. A majority of American citizens are now becoming skeptical of the claim that our carbon footprints, resulting from our use of fossil fuels, are going to lead to climatic calamities. But governments are not yet listening to the citizens. Biofuels such as ethanol require enormous amounts of cropland and end up displacing either food crops or natural wilderness, neither of which is good. 10% of the big fish still remain. There are still some blue whales. There are still some krill in Antarctica. There are a few oysters in Chesapeake Bay. Half the coral reefs are still in pretty good shape, a jeweled belt around the middle of the planet. There's still time, but not a lot to turn things around. I think Captain Cousteau might be the father of the environmental movement. Public discourse has been polluted now for decades by corporate-funded disinformation, not just with climate change but with a host of health, environmental and societal threats. The implications for the planet are grim. Nevertheless, there is another threat on the horizon. I see this threat in environmentalism which is becoming a new dominant ideology if not a religion. Its main weapon is raising the alarm and predicting the human life endangering climate change based on man-made global warming. 
If we do not permit the earth to produce beauty and joy, it will in the end not produce food, either. There are plenty of problems in the world, and doubtless climate change, or whatever the currently voguish phrase for it all is, certainly is one of them. But it's low on my list. When all the world appears to be in a tumult, and nature itself is feeling the assault of climate change, the seasons retain their essential rhythm. Yes, fall gives us a premonition of winter, but then, winter, will be forced to relent, once again, to the new beginnings of soft greens, longer light, and the sweet air of spring. The government should set a goal for a clean environment but not mandate how that goal should be implemented. It appears to be a law that you cannot have a deep sympathy with both man and nature. You may be able to fool the voters, but not the atmosphere. If we're destroying our trees and destroying our environment and hurting animals and hurting one another and all that stuff, there's got to be a very powerful energy to fight that. I think we need more love in the world. We need more kindness, more compassion, more joy, more laughter. I definitely want to contribute to that. Mother Nature comes up against reality, and the reality is that the system doesn't work. It seems that every time mankind is given a lot of energy, we go out and wreck something with it. No one should be able to enter a wilderness by mechanical means. Population, when unchecked, goes on doubling itself every 25 years or increases in a geometrical ratio. The Endangered Species Act is the strongest and most effective tool we have to repair the environmental harm that is causing a species to decline. Take air quality in the United States today, it's about 30% better than it was 25 years ago, even though there are now more people driving more cars. I did not become a vegetarian for my health, I did it for the health of the chickens. I think so long as fossil fuels are cheap, people will use them and it will postpone the movement towards new technologies. Maintaining healthy forests is essential to those who make a living from the land and for those of us who use them for recreational purposes. I think the future for solar energy is bright. Journey with me to a true commitment to our environment. Journey with me to the serenity of leaving to our children a planet in equilibrium.